It was just a traffic stop in Douglas County, but within hours, that led investigators to two people they call major drug dealers. A 10-year-old girl is recovering tonight at Eggleston after being gunned down inside her home while she watched television with her family. And who didn't vote for Chipper Jones? Tonight, we search out the Hall of Fame voters to find out why. Live from Atlanta, 11 Alive at 5 starts now. Breaking news right now, a street through the heart of downtown tourism is shut down. Centennial Park Place closed for blocks because there's been a water main break there. Thousands of you have been watching this video on Facebook Live with us today. The water flooding right onto the street. And we just got off the phone with Atlanta Watershed. They say that road is not buckling, but it is on level, and that is why they had to shut it down. New tonight at 5, a child caught in the crossfire. Right now, a 10-year-old girl is recovering after being shot twice in her own home last night. Tonight, we're learning more about what happened and the search for the suspects. 11 Alive, Latasha Givens joins us now from Eggleston. That's where the little girl is. And Latasha, the question we are getting so often right now on the Facebook page is, how is she doing? We are happy to report she is doing just fine. Even though she was shot twice, police say she was simply watching TV with her family in the living room when someone opened fire. Plenty of kids be playing down there, but and they be riding up on them scooters up and down the street. Mitchell Carter has lived on Susan Lane for nearly 30 years. He was shocked to hear gunshots ring out Wednesday night. He was even more surprised to learn one of the little girls he's seen playing on the street was shot. Police say she was inside her home with her family when bullets sprayed through her home, hitting her twice in the leg. And it was seven rounds. Melinda Tilly lives a few doors down. She knows the victim only as a playmate. My little niece be playing with the little girl, my little great niece. Police are searching for a motive and a suspect, but tips are coming in about a suspicious vehicle seen leaving the scene, a silver two-door sedan. And we've obtained a call log that shows multiple occupants called 911 at least 13 times. We're looking into those records. I'm working on that part of the story coming up tonight at 6. Back to you. All right, Latasha, see you at 6. Thank you. New at 5, a Gwinnett County Middle School student is facing criminal charges after video surfaced of her attacking another student right in the classroom. This is video from Creekland Middle School. It's been circulating around oh. social media. It shows that 7th grade student poking another student with the legs of that chair, then hitting her. Wow. School officials say it happened at the end of the day. It was January 22nd. The principal sent a note home that day detailing to parents what had happened, and you can read that full note on 11alive.com. A traffic stop in Douglas County led to investigators to break up what they say was a major meth distribution operation. It is the very latest bust by one of Metro Atlanta's most aggressive drug-fighting law enforcement teams. 11 Alive's John Sherrick is in Douglas County. He has the story for us tonight. A sheriff's deputy noticed a car weaving here on Fairburn Road in Douglas County, just south of I-20. He stopped the car, and inside, investigators say they found one pound of meth, ready to be broken down into thousands of individual street doses. Detectives arrested the driver, a known meth dealer, they say, Clint Dwayne Ayers. And that arrest led them to another man who was already under surveillance in a meth trafficking case, Michael Brian Rochester. And in his house, they say they found guns, cash, and another pound and a half of meth. More than two and a half pounds of meth in all, worth on the street up to $100,000. Sergeant Jesse Hambrick says that amounts to 4,500 individual doses of meth that will not make it to the streets across Metro Atlanta. That's 4,500 times that, that members of this sheriff's office are hopefully preventing someone from using what we consider to be a very, very bad uh, drug. Metro Atlanta is a major hub for meth distribution up and down the eastern U.S. It was just this past April when the Douglas County Sheriff's Office busted another huge suspected meth operation, arresting 18 people then. You don't want to uh, say that you can't make a dent because you can. I mean, it, it's just something that is a devastating drug and we're glad to, to get it off the street. Detectives continuing to investigate to see who else might be involved and to figure out the source of all that meth. In Douglas County, John Shearick, 11 Alive News. 
We started out cold this morning. The kids ran back in <laughs> before they got on the bus to get another layer. Then it warmed up so nicely, Chris, but you're tracking some changes for the weekend. Yeah, we're going to see some rain that's going to move our way, and I know it's kind of hard to think about that when it's so beautiful outside right now with temperatures in the upper 50s. Nothing's showing up on radar right now, but let me show you the system that we're watching that is out to the west. The rain that we're expecting for the weekend is just now getting its act together here in parts of southern Texas, also in parts of western Texas as well. That's the system. Still going to take a while before it makes it into our area, but it is increasing our rain chances as we head into the weekend. But for now, enjoy this. This is a live look from our tower cam here in Athens. Of course, we're looking toward the west as the sun's going to be going down just after 6 o'clock tonight. And we had a lot of sunshine out there today that helped us warm up into the upper 50s at 58 degrees. Right now, our temperatures are down just a little bit. We're at 56 here in town. More of those mid and upper 50s around metro Atlanta, even some 60s on the map uh, down in LaGrange, and then that cooler air up in North Georgia in the lower 50s. So here's what we're watching going through the rest of the evening hours tonight. Similar to last night, once the sun goes down with the mainly clear sky, we're going to see these temperatures that fall into the 40s at 7 o'clock. We'll be in the upper 40s and then falling into the 30s once again by tomorrow morning. I don't think we'll be quite as cool tomorrow morning as we were this morning when we started off at 32 at the freezing mark. And we'll also be nice and warm tomorrow afternoon as well. Stay with us. We're going to work on the timing of which parts of the weekend you'll have the better chance to get wet. We'll have more on that coming up. Ah, timing's everything, Chris. <laughs> it always is. Thank you so much. We now have some new information on a story we first broke on the morning rush. Officers shot and killed a man in front of a strip mall. 11 Alive's Melissa Long is following the story. Melissa, police say the victim was holding a gun at the time. Mm -hmm, that's what they're saying, and we now have the name of the victim tonight. He's a 27-year-old Stephen Hutchins of Buford. This happened along Peachtree Industrial Boulevard, as you mentioned this morning, not far from Hutchins' home, which is on Gold Creek Trail. Gwinnett police say they received a 911 call early this morning, about 4 o'clock. The caller said a man was walking in the road with a gun. Officers confronted Hutchins in front of a laundromat, noticed he had that gun in his waistband. We tried to engage him in conversation. We did see the weapon in his waistband, and at one point the suspect took the weapon out of his waistband and started aiming it or pointing it at our officers. One of the officers was able to withdraw his firearm and fire at, at least more than one round towards the suspect, striking him. One of the officers that responded to the scene, a medic, attended to Hutchins afterwards but was unable to save him. Gwinnett police are saying there was a surveillance camera close by, but they don't know yet if the incident was actually being recorded. Police were also telling us they were called to Hutchins' home earlier this week. That was for a suicide call, but the person at the home refused treatment. Mm -hmm. Cheryl. All right, Melissa, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Just a mile from that shooting, another breaking story that has many people talking. It is a train colliding with a trailer. Our 11 Alive Sky Tracker was over the scene this morning. That is at the intersection of Silas King Street and West Main Street. Police are telling us the trailer portion of an 18 wheeler got stuck on the tracks and then was hit by an approaching train. The conductor of the train saw the vehicle ahead of time, was able to slow down, so the impact was not as severe as it might have been. The conductor still taken to the hospital, but only for back pain. Nobody was in the other vehicle at the time of the crash. An electrical box explodes in College Park. Now there's an investigation trying to figure out how that happened. Why did that happen this morning? It was on the corner of Phoenix Boulevard and Phoenix Parkway. Three workers experienced minor burns. They had to be taken to the hospital for treatment. Right now, it's still a mystery what caused that explosion. For many UGA football fans, the lasting memory of the national championship, other than the heartache of overtime against Alabama, was... Uh, that long wait, just trying to get into the ball game if you were stuck outside on the gates. Today, I spoke with Falcons president and CEO Rich McKay, the man with the keys to the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. I asked him about any improvements that need to be made to getting large groups in and out before we host the Super Bowl next year. The biggest issue, McKay says, the presidential visit, specifically changing his plans at the last second and the Secret Service then taking over all aspects of security. It was very disappointing for us in the entry experience that people had. I mean, you know, when you, we designed our building uh, to try to get people in and out as quickly as possible. And then to come to a national championship game and have people wait two hours, two and a half hours in really cold weather, uh, was very challenging. Uh, but you learn that when you don't have control of the building, you don't have control of the experience. Uh, and um, it leaves you powerless and it's upsetting. 
We are going to be spending time with Mr. McKay and the rest of the Super Bowl committee next week as they tour Minneapolis on the packing list, a lot of warm clothes, the updated forecast on Super Bowl Sunday, a high of 11. That's a, that's a good thing. Anything with an 11 is good, Cheryl, that we know. Sure, except when that's <laughs> 21 degrees below the freezing mark. Huh. Home Depot announcing today it's going to give its hourly employees cash bonuses of up to $1,000. Home Depot, of course, based here in Atlanta and says they made this decision in part because of President Trump's new tax reform package. Home Depot now joining a growing number of companies who very publicly have announced plans to use the new tax benefits to invest back into the workers. This list includes Starbucks, Walmart, AT&T and now Home Depot. A baby and grandmother shot in a yard near Macon. They're not the only victims.